All right, guys, we got Patrick stepping up. You hear us okay? Gotcha. All right, uh, we'll start first with Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Patrick, uh, you've been seeing a lot of the bills uh, lately, and it seems like you probably that's probably going to continue. Just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Josh Allen, what you like about him as a player, and uh, what's it like competing against him? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a tremendous player. Um, I actually know him a little bit off the field as well, great dude. Um, he, they put a lot on his shoulders, and he, he, he rises, to the, rises to the occasion. I mean, he's able to run the ball. He can throw the ball. He has the arm, arm strength to throw anywhere on the football field, and he makes great decisions. So, uh, like you said, we'll probably play them a lot of times. Uh, it'll be great competition. Uh, and uh, it's definitely a great challenge for us as a, as a team to, to compete with them. Let's go next to Herbie Teope. Go to Herbie. Hey, Patrick. Tyreek Hill has sort of had to reinvent himself this season, no longer just known as a deep threat. But from your opinion as his quarterback, how impressed – have you been with the way that he's been able to adjust to how the defenses have been playing y'all? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's been, it's been incredible. I mean, the, the way he's able to run routes between coverages, I mean, pretty much every coverage, he has two people on him or two people kind of shadowing over the top of him, and he's still getting himself open, making tough catches over the middle of the field um, and really evolved, evolved his game. And then at the end of the day, whenever he gets in those man uh, cover situations, like he did this last weekend, it, you can always hit him over the top for touchdowns. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go to Pete. Patrick, we know Jarek had a, a good game last game. You guys really got him going. Um, whether it's Jarek or, or one of these other backs, what is getting getting the short game and, and the backs do for you when it comes to taking maybe those deep shots to, to Tyreek? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to get that involved, especially early. I mean, um, when deep teams are playing these deep coverages and they're kind of really focusing on Tyreek and Travis and all these other receivers that we have, um, getting it, the ball to the, the running backs in space and then making one guy miss usually ends up being big gains. And so Jared did a great job of that this week. Um, and then um, running the ball as well. And then once we do that, you see that the stuff over the top opens up. So you just got to be patient with that. And then whenever you get a chance to hit over the top, you make, you make sure you execute that one. Next to Todd Palmer. Go ahead, Todd. Hey, Patrick. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Travis Kelsey. Um, you know, he's a guy who earlier in his career was prone to getting personal personal fouls, different things like that. What have you seen in terms of his personal growth and maturity, not only as a football player and your relationship there, but also just as a man off the field? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a great uh, person for this community. I mean, the way he gives back to this community uh, is awesome. And it sets an example for everybody on the team. And, uh, I mean, obviously, he, he had some personal fouls early in his career. He's learned from those, didn't make the same mistake twice. Still a competitor, still goes out there and plays with passion. Um, but, uh, I mean, he, he's definitely grown up as, as he's kind of went through his entire career. And, I mean, he's the old guy on the team now, so he can't be making those personal fouls anymore. Let's go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Patrick, do you have a – you know, people kind of describe your mindset in games as – I mean – I, you know, listen, like a, a blank you mindset that there's a there's a stage that you get to where you you go to another competitive level. And I've just had people, you know, recently around town, that's been like a conversation that like you kind of maybe got there, like the Pittsburgh game didn't start the way you wanted. But th when that clicked in 11 minutes later, you've thrown five touchdowns. Is that accurate? Is there is there a, a level within you or is that just the perception fans have when it uh, when it gets rolling like it did? Yeah, I mean, I think I just really like winning. That, that's a, that's pretty much the end of it. Let's go next to James Palmer. Go ahead, James. Patrick, I'm curious about your, you running the football this season compared to years past, 5.8 yards a carry. It seems like, and I could be wrong on this, but like your decision-making in when to go and picking your spots have been better in years past. Do you feel like that's an improvement this year for you compared to seasons past? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, um, I think you've seen it from me in the playoffs before it's when teams really focus in on Tyreek and Travis and they have two people on both of them and then other guys are getting covered in kind of man type covered situations it kind of opens up lanes for me to run uh, I've been telling Tyreek that I'm getting faster every year too so I mean I got a, I got a little bit of speed there and so when it when it's presented the opportunity I think I'd try to get up get, get first downs and get out of bounds got time for a couple more we'll go next to Sam McDowell good Sam hey Patrick as you guys study the bills and you specifically look at film can you kind of break down maybe even if it's percentage wise, how much you're focusing on that first matchup versus how they're playing recently defensively? I think it's, you got to do everything, uh, especially this time of the year. I mean, you're going to, they're going to have change ups obviously that they didn't do in the first matchup. They have good defensive coordinator. They have a good defensive head coach. 
Uh, they have good players over there, so they're not going to sit back and do the same stuff they've done against us before. Um, but they're going to take what they did well and do that and then add change-ups in there. And so uh, I'll watch uh, all the previous games that we've played against them these last few, last year and a half pretty much. And then I'll watch – I've watched all the games that they've played since then. Um, and I try to formulate a game plan uh, for myself of what I expect them to do, knowing that they'll, they'll have adjustments and I'll have to make adjustments on the fly during the game. We'll go last to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Patrick, I asked Andy about – their safeties, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poirier, uh, they seem to do the best about having that two deep safety shell. I just wonder what, what it was like to face them earlier this year and just how much of a challenge will you try to provide or, or maybe sort of use from that game uh, to sort of counteract their ability to sort of work in tandem together? Yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're very smart, very athletic, um, and really have the understanding for what they want to do as a defense. I mean, they're two Pro Bowl caliber players. I mean, it's, it's hard to get two safeties like that on the same team. Um, and they play well off of each other. They know how to kind of rock the two high shells to go to one high. They both can play up top or down low. Um, and so it, it's a tremendous challenge to try to get a read for what they're doing. I mean, they, they have two great players in the back end that, that can really um, do a great job of disrupting what you want to do as an offense. So you have to try to ha account for both of them on every single play. Patrick, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, guys, we got Nick Gallagretti coming your next.